Welcome to this lecture on Solution to Exercise 5.2 Question 9 to Question 15 by Dr. Rajesh Singh. So welcome everyone to this part 2 of the solutions to exercise for section 5.2 from the book Introduction to Rare Analysis by Bartel and Sherbert. So in this video I will solve from question number 9 to question number 15. In the previous video, we have solved from question number 1 to question number 8. So let us start with question number 9. So let us see what is the question number 9. Okay, so this is the question number 9. So uh, this is that H is a function from R to R. It is continuous on R and it satisfies this property H of M by 2N is equal to 0 for all M belonging to Z and N belonging to N. We have to show that hx is equal to 0 for all x belonging to r. So it is similar to the question which we did like. So if hx is equal to 0 for every x in q and h is continuous on r, then this implies hx is equal to 0 for every x in r. So we used here we used the property that uh, for uh, every, every point in R is a limit point of Q because we pick, pick we picked any rational number in any rational number any rational number and then we constructed us we got a sequence from Q n that convert from Q that converges to that point and using that we were able to prove this result so this question is similar to this so for that we will have to prove a similar result that we will prove that every point in R is a limit point of the set of elements of this form. So that we are going to prove first. So it is lemma you can use this directly as a result but we are going to prove it first. So what it says is so you can directly state this result in your uh, this uh, while proving this but uh, let us just prove this. So we have to show every point in R is a limit point of the set A equal to M by 2N where M belongs to Z and N belongs to N. Okay. So basically we have to prove that uh, the drive set of A is equal to R that is every point in R is a limit point of this set. So that we are going to prove. So proof let C belong to R be any arbitrary real number. So we have started with any arbitrary real number. So our claim is C is a limit point of A that is every epsilon neighborhood of C intersects A at a point different from C that is to show V epsilon neighborhood of C intersection A minus C is non-empty for every epsilon greater than 0. So we have to show this because we have to show that C is a limit point of A. So we have to show that every epsilon neighborhood of C intersects A at a point different from C. So this is what we are going to prove. So let us start. So let epsilon greater than 0 be any real number. So we have to show existence of a point uh, of the form m by 2n in the interval c minus epsilon to c plus epsilon. So we have to show an existence of this type of number in the interval c minus epsilon to c plus epsilon so let us start so since epsilon is greater than 0 so by archimedean property there exist n belonging to z positive such that 1 by 2n is less than epsilon by 2 we can always choose such a number by archimedean property because so this property is satisfied by a committed property you can easily prove because we know that every number we have this now I can always choose a number 
of this form which, which should be smaller than this so I can always choose n such that 2n is greater than m so this implies 1 by 2n is less than 1 by m so this is also by Archimedean property this is one version of Archimedean property and you can easily prove it also so 1 by 2n is less than epsilon by 2 so mark it as star that is 2n epsilon is greater than 2 or let us mark this as star because we are going to use this form of we are going to use this form so now consider the interval now consider the interval c minus epsilon into 2n to c my plus epsilon 2n so basically Okay, so we what we have basically done is we have multiplied so we have multiplied the intervals c minus epsilon by uh, c minus epsilon c plus epsilon by 2n so this is the interval that we are considering okay so then what is the length of this interval the length of this interval is if you will calculate the length of this interval then c and c will cancel and it will be 2n plus 1 epsilon so let i equal mark it as i then length of i is equal to c plus epsilon 2 to the power n minus c minus epsilon 2 to the power n which is equal to 2 to the power n plus 1 epsilon and which is greater than 4 using star because your 2n epsilon is greater than 2 so 2n plus epsilon is greater than 4 so length of this interval is greater than 4 so it contains at least 2 integers so this interval so since li is greater than 4 so this implies i intersection z is cardinality of this is greater than or equal to 3 in fact so it is greater than 2 so we can choose 2 intervals 2 integers so because it contains at least 3 integers so if uh, one of them is equal to c also if c is, a, c is an integer also then also we don't have any problem because so it contains so then there exists m belonging to z positive so z there exists an integer a. so there exists m belonging to i intersection z such that m by 2n is not equal to c so we can choose such an m because it contains 3 4 integers 3 4 distinct integers so if one of them is equal to c to the power 2n such that m is not equal to you can write m is not equal to c to the power 2n and why we can choose such an integer because it contains 3 4 uh, integers so we can all if this is all this is an integer then we can have a different integer so we can always choose an integer in i intersection z such that m is not equal to c to the power 2n so this implies m is to the power 2n is not equal to c and it belongs to the interval c minus epsilon to c plus epsilon because your m belongs to the interval i so m by 2n belongs to the interval c minus epsilon to c plus epsilon and this implies v epsilon neighborhood of c into this so this implies your m by 2n belongs to the set v epsilon in neighborhood so this is the v epsilon neighborhood of c intersection a because this is of the form uh, element of a minus this set c because it is distinct from c so this implies your v epsilon c intersection a minus c is non-empty and this implies c is a limit point of a hence every real number is a limit point of a so we have shown that every real number uh, every real number is a limit point of a so now we come back to the proof of this equation number 9 so let us just re repaste the question number 9 here so that you can again have a look at this 
so let us now come back to question number 9 So we have to show that if we given, so let us write its proof now. So proof given is H from H is continuous on R and second we are given that H of M by 2N is equal to 0 for all M belonging to Z and belonging to N. To show hx is equal to 0 for every x in R. Now let A be the set m by 2n, m belonging to z and n belonging to n. Then hx is equal to 0 for every x in A. This is given to us. Okay, so now we have to show that hx is equal to 0 for every x in R. So we pick any arbitrary real number. So let c belong to R be any arbitrary real number. So since c is an any arbitrary real number, so c is a limit point of c is a limit point of A by previous lemma because every real number is a limit point of A and so there exists a sequence whenever a point is a limit point of a set then there exists a sequence xn in A such that xn converges to C because C is a limit point of A so there exists a sequence xn in A that converges to C. Now for all n belonging to n xn belongs to A implies h of xn is equal to 0 and this implies or what we can do is we can first use the like, uh, sequential criteria for limit. Now since h is continuous on R so this implies h is continuous at C so by sequential criteria For continuity, H is continuous, sorry, HXN converges to HC. HXN converges to HC. Now let us come back to this. So, now for all n belonging to n, xn belongs to a, so this implies hxn is 0 by, by given hypothesis and hxn equal to 0 implies hxn converges to 0. So by uniqueness of limit, h of c is equal to 0. So since c belongs to r is arbitrary, it follows that hx is equal to 0 for every x in R. So this completes the proof of question number 9. Now let us move to question number 10. So let us see what's there in question number 10. So this is the question number 10. Okay, so this is the question number 10. Uh, F is a function from R to R and P is the set of all points in R at which the value of the function is positive. And we pick any point C in P. We have to show that there exists a neighborhood V delta of C such that it is contained in P. So this question is similar to what we did in uh, uh, exercise 5.1. So let me show you that question. So this is uh, question number 7 from exercise 5.1 and we have already done this. So what is given in this is f is a continuous function, fc is greater than 0 then there exists a neighborhood v delta c such that x x belongs to v delta c implies fx is greater than 0. So that means every point in this delta neighborhood of c is contained in this set p because c belongs to p implies fc is greater than 0. So there will exist a delta neighborhood of c such that 
x belonging to v delta c implies fx is greater than 0. So you can just imitate the proof of uh, question number 7 exercise 5.1. So we are not going to write the proof here. So imitate the proof of uh, question number 7 exercise 5.1. Okay. So we are not going to prove it here because it's just uh, rewriting the whole proof nothing else so let us move to the question number 11 sorry question number 11 yes so although it is a similar question to question number 10 but let us just prove this so we will prove this one again so we are given we are given two continuous functions fg continuous on r s is the set of all points in r such that fx is greater than or equal to uh, gx and sn is a sequence in n such that limit sn converges to s second sn is a sequence in s and sn is in s to show S belongs to S belongs to S that is to show f of S is greater than or equal to g of S so this is what we have to show so let us start so since f g r continuous on r and S belongs to R, so this implies fg is continuous fg are continuous at s so <coughs> as sn converges to s so by sequential criteria for continuity f of sn converges to fs and g of sn also converges to gs this is by sequential criteria for limit because sn converges to s and f and g are continuous at s so f of sn will converge to fs g of sn will converge to gs now for all n belonging to n sn belongs to s so this implies f of sn is greater than or equal to g of sn so this implies limit n tends to infinity f of sn is greater than or equal to limit n tends to infinity g of sn and this implies because limit of f of sn is your f of s and limit of g of sn is g of s so this implies uh, s belongs to s hence prove we are able to prove that the point s belongs to s under the given conditions fine so let us move to the next question which is question number 12 so let us take that question So it is similar to the question that we did in exercise 4.2.12. So we are given an additive function. Additive function means f of x plus y is equal to fx plus fy. We have to prove that if f is continuous at some point x0, then it is continuous at every point in R. Let us start. So given first f is additive and second f is continuous at x0 for some x0 belonging to r to show f is continuous on r that is f is continuous at every point in r so let us so the, we have to show that f is continuous at every point in r so 
because f is an additive function so its value at 0 should be equal to 0 in fact you can prove it also so consider f of 0 so this I can write as 0 plus 0 which is equal to f of 0 plus f of 0 by the given property so this implies f of 0 is equal to twice of f of 0 so this implies f of 0 is equal to 0 because this gets cancelled out so you get f of 0 equal to 0 also f of 0 can be written as f of for all x belonging to x for all x belonging to r f of 0 is equal to zero is equal to f of zero which is equal to f of x minus x so which is equal to f of x plus minus x so this is equal to f of x plus f of minus x so this is equal to zero so this implies f of minus x is equal to minus fx for every x in r so we have shown two properties that the value of the function at 0 is equal to 0 and the value of the function at minus x is equal to minus of fx for every x in r. Now we are going to prove that f is continuous on r using these two properties. These, are, these properties are due to additive property of So let c belongs to r be any arbitrary real number. So now we are going to use a trick because we are given that f is continuous at x naught and we have to show that limit x tends to c fx equal to fc so we have to define our limit at x uh, limit of f at x equal to c so for that we will use a trick so we will define a new function define h from r to r as so we have to define h in such a way that h of c should be equal to x naught h of c should be equal to x naught so for that what we will do we will define h hx because we want to take limit at c and it should come out to be so this limit should be should come out to be at x0 because the limit at x0 is given to us so that's why we will define h in such a way that it is so we'll define h in such a way that it is uh, uh, x0 at point c so for that we will define it like this x0 plus c minus x for every x in r then h of c is equal to x naught so clearly h is continuous on r right because it is uh, this is constant and this is your uh, the function x goes to x so this is just a linear function so it is continuous everywhere on r you can easily prove it so we don't need to need to prove it now now h is continuous on r and h of c is equal to it is h of c is equal to x naught now h is continuous at c and f is continuous at x naught which is equal to h of c so as composition of two continuous function is continuous is continuous so f of h is continuous at c because h is continuous at c and f is continuous at h c so f of h is continuous at c so this implies limit x tends to c f of h c is equal to sorry f of hx is equal to f of h c so this is this implies limit x tends to c f of hx f of hx is equal to f of hc so that is so this implies limit x tends to c f of x naught plus c minus x is equal to f of x naught now you can you apply the additive property of f because f is additive so i can 
uh, apply additive property twice so i will get this limit x tends to c f of x naught plus f of c minus f of x equal to f of x naught now by algebra of limit algebra of limit what we will have these two are constant so i can take them outside f of x naught plus f of c minus limit x tends to c f of x equal to f of x naught so now these two f of x naught gets cancelled so from here what we get we get limit x tends to c f of x is equal to f of c so this implies limit x tends to c f of x is equal to f of c so this implies f is continuous at c so since c belong to r is arbitrary it follows that f is continuous on r so it's very simple the only trick is we have to define this function h in such a way that it uh, takes the value x naught at point c so then we can have this uh, f of h continuous at c and then we can simply apply the additive property of this and we get the desired result that it is continuous at x naught now let us take the next question which is question number 13 so again this is given to be an additive function so same rules we will apply again same thing we will do so proof let us start so what we are given we are given a continuous additive function on r we are given that c is equal to f of 1 we show that we have fx equal to cx for all x belonging to r so given f is additive and continuous on r and second c is equal to f of 1 to prove f of x is equal to cx for all x belonging to r so what we will do is we will first prove this result for a set of naturals then we will prove this result for a set of integers and then we will extend it to set of rationals and then we will extend it to set of uh, reals so this is so in, we will do it in four steps so first step we will show it for set of natural numbers then second step we will show it for set of uh, uh, your uh, integers so uh, then third step we will show it for set of uh, rational numbers and fourth step we will show it for set of real numbers now for any n belonging to n f of n is equal to f of 1 plus 1 plus so on n times so applying the additive property inductively we can get this equal to f1 plus f1 plus f1 so we will have to apply this property n times because uh, so by additive property of f so we will have to apply this in n steps to get this because if you see if we have three times so then we can write it as f of f1 plus f of 1 plus 1 and then we will again apply this and then we will get this so we can inductively apply and get this result okay so this is so this is equal to n times f of 1 or this is equal to cn since c is equal to f of 1 so we are able to prove it for set of natural numbers now we will prove it for set of uh, uh, integers so for that first we will have to prove two results that we have already proved in the last part so in fact you can prove it like this f of 0 is equal to f of 0 plus 0 which is equal to f of 0 plus f of 0 so this implies f of 0 is equal to 0 also for any x belonging to r f of zero is equal to f of 
x f of 0 which is equal to f of x minus x which is equal to f of x plus f of minus x so this implies f of minus x is equal to minus fx for every x in r so now we have proved these two properties so now we can come to our integers now for any so we we already know for positive integers so let n belong to z negative be any negative integer then n is equal to minus m for some m belonging to z or oh, n belonging to n set of naturals to consider f of n so this is equal to f of minus m now the by this property this is equal to minus of fm and then we have already proved for integers so this is equal to minus of f of 1 which is equal to minus c since c is equal to f1 so this implies it is equal to cn so hence so we have proved for negative integers we have proved for positive integers and for 0 it is 0 so which is equal to c times 0 so we can write it like this also c times 0 so hence for this f of n is equal to cn for all n belonging to that so we are able to prove this result now we are going to prove it for any rational number so let x belonging to q be any rational number then x is equal to m by n for some m belonging to z and n belonging to n right because it is all every rational number is of the form m by n where m is an integer and n is any natural number so this implies now to consider consider f of x so f of x is equal f of x is equal to f of m by n which is equal to 1 by n times n f of m by n so basically we have multiplied and divide by n now we can write this as f of m by n plus f of m by n plus so on n times now using the additive property we will get this n times using using additive property of f now so this is nothing but 1 by n times f of n times m by n so this is nothing but your f of 1 by n times f of m and f of m being an integer so this is equal to m c so this is equal to c m by n which is equal to c x so hence f of x is equal to c x for every x belonging to q so we have proved so we have proved for natural numbers so we have proved for natural numbers then we are able to prove for set of integers and now we are able to prove it for set of rational numbers so finally we are left to prove it for a set of real numbers so let y belong to r be any arbitrary real number so since so by density theorem by density theorem there will exist a sequence there exist a sequence xn in q such that xn converges to y so now because so far we have not used the property of continuity now we will use the property of continuity so since f is continuous on r so this implies f is continuous at y 
so by sequential criteria for limit by sequential criteria for continuity your so this f f of xn converges to f of y now for all n belonging to n xn belongs to q so this implies f of xn is equal to c times xn so this implies f of xn converges to c and because xn is converging to y so cy since xn converges to y so this implies by uniqueness of limit from star and double star so by uniqueness of limit from star and double star it follows that f of y is equal to cy so since y belonging to r is arbitrary it follows that hence f of y is equal to cy for every y belonging to r hence proved this is what we needed to prove so uh, to prove this we have to uh, take four steps so first step is to prove it for natural numbers then you prove it for uh, real numbers you have to use this fact that f of minus x is equal to minus of fx and then you have to prove it for rational number so rational number is just a manipulation and then to prove it for any arbitrary real number you will have to use the sequence property so you will have to use the density theorem and then you have, will have to use the sequential criteria so now let us move to the next question which is question number 14 so it is similar to what we did in question number 12 so instead of additive function we are given this function that additive is converting into multiplicative so g of x plus y is equal to g x g y and g is continuous at x equal to 0 we have to show that g is continuous at every point of r and if we have g equal to 0 for some a belong to r then g x is equal to 0 for every x belonging to r so this is what we have to show so what we are given so we are given two things first g of x plus y is equal to gx gy for all xy belonging to r and second we are given that g is continuous at 0 so g is continuous at 0 means limit x tends to 0 gx is equal to g0 and then to show g is continuous at every point of r to show g is continuous at every point of r that is g is continuous on r so first we will prove we get the value for 0 as we get so now g of 0 can be written as g of 0 plus 0 and then using this property it is g of 0 into g of 0 so this implies when you will get this so g of 0 square minus g of 0 is equal to 0 so this implies g of 0 g of 0 minus 1 is equal to 0 so this implies g of 0 is equal to 0 or g of 0 is equal to 1 so we have two cases case 1 when g of 0 is equal to 0 and case 2 when g of 0 is equal to 1 so if your g of 0 is equal to 0 then for any x belonging to r g of x can be written as g of x plus 0 right we can write g g of x equal to g of x plus 0 so this is nothing but g of x dot g of 0 by the property by hypothesis and this implies g of x into 0 so this implies 0 
So in this case, if j of 0 is equal to 0, then j is a constant function 0 and hence continuous. So this implies g is equal to 0 for all x gx is equal to 0 for all x in r so g being a constant function so this implies g is continuous on r being a constant function on r so g is continuous on r so we are done in this case so if g of 0 is equal to 0 then we are true so we are true in this case So let g of 0 equal to 1. So we are considering the case when g of 0 is equal to 1. So now again as we did in that question number 12 we have to uh, again it's because we have to talk about continuity at some point c. So first let us take let c belong to r be any arbitrary point. So we have picked any arbitrary point, we have to show that g is continuous at c. So to show g is continuous at c, we have to define limit x tends to c, g c or gx. So for that we will uh, again define a function. So define h from r to r as hx equal to, so now we have to get, because this is defined at 0, so we have to get uh, the value 0 at point c so for that we will take c minus x for every x in r so then h is continuous on r so now as h is now h of c is also h of c is equal to 0 since h is continuous at c and g is continuous at 0 which is equal to h of c so g of, g of f is continuous at c why because composition of Two continuous function is continuous so composition of two continuous functions so h is continuous at c g is continuous at 0 which is equal to h c so this implies g o h is continuous at c and g o h is continuous at c implies limit x tends to c g of h x is equal to g o h c so this implies limit x tends to c g of h x is equal to g of h c so this implies limit x tends to c this is g of c minus x equal to g of 0 so this implies limit x tends to c g of c into g of minus x is equal to uh, 1 f of c so this implies because using algebra of limit you can take this gc outside so this implies limit x tends to c g minus x is equal to 1 by gc okay why because gc is non-zero why because GC is 0 implies okay so take let us take this write this as first let us take this as limit x tends to c g of minus x is equal to 1 so mark it as star so now we have to we are getting minus x here so we have to get somehow x so for this we will use a property so we will come to again now if g of x equal to 0 for some x belonging to r yeah g of a equal to 0 if g of a is equal to 0 for 
any a belonging to R then this implies so g of x can be written as g of x minus a plus a so this is equal to g of x minus a dot g of a so this implies 0 since g of a is equal to 0 so for all x belonging to r so this implies g of x is equal to 0 for all x belonging to r hence but g of 0 is equal to 1 so contradiction hence g is not 0 on r so because we are taking the case when g of 0 is equal to 1 so in this case g is never 0 okay and another thing is next consider for any x in r so g of 1 1 is equal to 1 is equal to g of 0 and g of 0 is g of x minus x so this is equal to g of x into g of minus x so this implies g of minus x is equal to 1 by gx and this is defined because g of x is not equal to 0 for all x belonging to r so this is true for all x belonging to r so using and using double star in star because in double in star we had g minus x so now we can use in double star, this fact so using double star in star we get gc into limit x tends to c 1 by gx is equal to 1 so this implies limit x tends to c gx is equal to gc because this you will take in the denominator and then you will apply the algebra of limits and then you will reciprocate it so you will get this so this implies g is continuous on a continuous at C and since C is arbitrary so since C belonging to R is arbitrary it follows that G is continuous on R so we have completed another question so we have already proved this part that if g of a is equal to 0 for some a belong to r then gx has to be equal to 0 so this this is the this is the same proof you will follow it so you can write gx equal to g of x minus a plus a so this is this and g of a equal to 0 so we are using this already in the proof now we are left to prove the last question which is question number 15 so let us take that and then we will end this lecture So this is very easy question. So this this is nothing but they are they are asking that you have to prove that maximum of fx uh, maximum this result we have already proved at lot of places that maximum of a b is equal to one by two times uh, a plus b plus one by two times mod a minus b. So same result we are going to prove it for fx and not so very simple result we have to do it in cases case 1 case 2 so let us start so given hx is equal to hx is equal to supremum of fx gx for all x belonging to r and to show hx equal to 1 by 2 times fx plus gx plus 1 by 2 times mod fx minus gx for every x in r so let c belong to r be any arbitrary real number so we have picked any arbitrary real number now we will show this result for 
hc and then because c is arbitrary so this will hold for every real number so now we have two uh, so we have two possibilities so we have two possibilities so what is case one is case one is f of c is greater than or equal to g of c so then h of c is equal to which is equal to supremum of fc gc is, will be equal to fc also 1 by 2 times f of c plus g of c plus 1 by 2 times mod fc minus gc will be equal to 1 by 2 times fc plus gc plus 1 by 2 times because fc is greater than gc so this will be positive so we can have fc minus gc so then gc gc gets cancelled and you get equal to fc which is equal to hc so in this case we have proved that it is equal now case 2 when f of c is less than g of c then same then your h of c is equal to gc also 1 by 2 times fc plus gc plus 1 by 2 times mod fc minus gc will be equal to 1 by 2 times fc plus gc plus 1 by 2 times so because gc is greater than fc so this will become gc minus fc so now fc fc will get cancelled and you will get gc which is equal to your hc because hc is equal to gc so hence in either case hence in either case hc is equal to 1 by 2 times fc plus gc plus 1 by 2 times mod fc minus mod gc so this since c belong to r is arbitrary the result follows okay we have to prove one more thing that h is continuous so so hx is equal to 1 by 2 times fx plus gx plus 1 by 2 times mod fx minus gx now next we have to prove that h is continuous on r and this is h is continuous at c so this can be proved using the fact that f is continuous at c g is continuous at c so both f and g this sum will be continuous at c also this difference will be continuous at c and this is mod of this so continuous at c so by algebra of limits you can say that it is it is continuous at c okay because f and g are continuous at c so uh, h is continuous at c or define k x k from r to r as kx equal to mod x for all x belonging to r then it is easy to see that h is equal to 1 by 2 times f plus g plus 1 by 2 times k of f minus g so by since f g and k are continuous at c so by algebra of continuous functions and using the fact that composition of two continuous function continuous function is continuous it it follows that h is 
continuous at C because this function will be continuous sum of two functions is continuous difference of two continuous functions is continuous now composition of two continuous function is continuous so everything is continuous so this completes question number 15 and also the uh, solutions for exercise 5.2 so thank you for watching this video bye everyone have a good day thank you for watching this video please subscribe to our youtube channel online learning to stay updated and share with your friends happy learning through online learning to watch more click on any of these cards Thank you once again.